This is the fourth in a series of podcasts on integrative medicine with Dr. Yoon Han Kim, Chief Wellness Officer. Today, we'll discuss using lifestyle to correct metabolism, obesity, and diabetes using low-carb keto medicine as a new field of medicine. Welcome to a podcast presented by Memorial Hospital. I'm Maggie McKay. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice to see you again, Dr. Kim. Like, likewise, so I'm very grateful to be here this morning. Just to begin, would you please tell us what made you interested in lifestyle medicine and what it is? So the, when I, I had the uh, fortune of studying with Dr. Andrew Weil, um, who's a pioneer in integrative medicine in person. And what something happened is that he tried to teach me lifestyle medicine when I studied with him in 2002 to 2004, and I was really not a good student. I didn't know how to cook, so Dr. Weil uh, recommended I learn how to cook with the chefs, which I did. But I would say that I still wasn't a great student until something happened. And then I realized that no supplements uh, can overcome lifestyle. And and by, uh, by lifestyle, uh, no amount of exercise, no quality of exercise can overcome that diet. That's what I realized. And it's hard to go anywhere without hearing somebody talking about the keto diet, or we probably all know someone or several people who are on it. Uh, what are some of the benefits of keto that you've experienced? So it's, it's, it's an interesting story because it, when I was in high school, um, I did a a uh, book report, and I went to National Library in Singapore, and I picked a book, and it was about how they treated diabetes without insulin when they didn't have insulin. So a long time ago, when uh, like in 1800s, when people had diabetes uh, type 1, they just died. And they, they, would, they would go into uh, ketoacidosis, and there was no insulin to bring them out, so they died. And then uh, scientists in England found out that you can put people on ketogenic diet, meaning to put them in a fat-burning, low, no-carbohydrate diet, and those people survived. So I did my book report on that, and I forgot about it, and then I uh, went to college, went to medical school, still forgot about it. And then during COVID, um, something happened. Uh, I was uh, away from my family. I was working uh, away from my family. I was isolated, uh, COVID happened, and I ended up gaining about 50 pounds, and diabetes came. So uh, I remembered what I read in high school and began to research a lot on keto. And, um, and uh, because part of this is that you can treat diabetes, but you don't really hear about there's a plan to reverse diabetes. When people get diabetes type 2, they, they usually take the medicine they have what they call honeymoon phase, where, where the blood sugar control is excellent. And then it stops working. Then they have to take more medications, add medications, and sometimes use insulin. Now, there are people who uh, manage diabetes fine with uh, diet and exercise, but I wasn't one of them. So uh, what I decided to do was uh, put myself in ketosis. And uh, uh, so I stopped eating any carbohydrates. And then uh, in the beginning, uh, had to, it was very difficult. And then it got, became easier and easier. And now I, I hardly ha have to plan my diet. All, all I have to do is if I go to a new restaurant, I have to look at their menu so that um, I know what I'll be ordering or if I know that if I have to eat something before uh, going to that restaurant. So do you think you'll follow this the rest of your life? It's 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 likely I, I've lost about um, the, I've lost fifty pounds and uh, there's about twenty more pounds, uh, twenty to twenty five pounds that I like to lose uh, more, and uh, after that I think that I may introduce some carbohydrates in the form of what they call uh, prebiotics, so berries uh, such as blueberries, uh, 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 blackberries, raspberries. And strawberries because they they provide nutrient for our uh, gut the the, the microbiomes. So right now I'm I'm even watching those. But once I get to my ideal weight and the diabetes is formally reversed, 
then uh, likely I'll stay on a form of this, uh, but probably uh, I'll remain in ketosis until um, until something changes. Or I usually tell my patients that I intend to quit when I uh, my heat my feet will hit the coffin. Then I'll stop being in ketosis. Uh oh. Dr. Kim, what is ketosis and how does one achieve it? So ketosis is, um, it, it just means fat burning state. And uh, we, we have uh, macronutrient wise, we have three types of fuels. We have uh, carbohydrates, uh, which is sugar, complex sugar, simple sugar. And then we have protein and then we have fat. Ketosis means you're burning the fat. And easiest way to enter, there are multiple ways to enter uh, ketosis. Uh, there's internet ketosis. And uh, people saying that you do it this way, do it that way. But simply, if you don't e eat any carbohydrates, your body will go into ketosis when your um, liver runs out of sugar storage in the form of glycogen. So for most people, that's probably three to four days of not eating carbohydrate. And so obviously, if someone fasts, then they will go into ketosis. Um, if they stop eating carbohydrates and eat more about due ketosis, uh, keto diet, which is protein driven, they'll go into ketosis. If they eat uh, uh, mainly uh, like internet ketosis, fat driven diet, they'll also go into ketosis. Um, and if they uh, drink a uh, green juice, which doesn't have very high carb, low carb, low protein, low fat, they'll also go into ketosis. So there are multiple ways to get into ketosis. And depending on what patient uh, prefers and says that is sustainable, then that's the style that I recommend. So I have patients who are um, who says that I I'm, I'm going to just do everything by um, doing greens. So then they'll do green juicing for a month, and then they'll come out of it being uh, what we call ketotarian. Oh, I've never heard that term. That makes yeah. sense. Um, so you touched a little on this, but let's talk more about the benefits of keto. What have you observed so, so far? For me, um, it was for health reason. Uh, I, 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 uh, uh, the, the lifestyle that I chose or didn't choose that uh, I wasn't unmindful resulted in developing diabetes So, uh, and weight gain of 50 pounds. So that has been reversed. Now I'm trying to go, go to what is considered my uh, optimal, uh, optimal weight. And with that, my uh, markers for diabetes has uh, improved and uh, markers for inflammation like CRP, C-reactive protein has decreased. My liver enzymes had returned to normal. So these are uh, conditions that I would say that in a matter of uh, six months to a year uh, cannot be reversed so easily using medication, but using lifestyle, especially using keto diet, um, I, I look. I don't even look at uh, keto ketosis as keto diet, but it's keto medicine. And what about your autoimmune system? Does it affect that? So it also began as a an accident because uh, uh, I do have an autoimmune condition that I went to a uh, specialist and uh, they gave me. Uh, it's a skin condition and uh, very very strong steroids, and it failed to treat it. So, um, and when I went on ketosis, I just noticed that the lesion just became uh, less prominent and uh, less noticeable. And the protrusions that I experienced are uh, reversed. So it's not re in remission, but it's, it's, I would say about 80% much better than where it started. And then what had happened is when I made this observation, I had other patients who had very, very uh, treatment-resistant um, condition in terms of uh, skin condition. So I recommended that they should try um, keto di ketogenic diet. And uh, lo and behold, about 80% of their condition just disappeared. Wow. Does it help with pain for patients experiencing pain? Yes. I think, especially if the pain comes from the nerves, I think that the keto ketosis the ketones have a tendency to calm down uh, the nervous system. And we see that in recent uh, newspaper article. There was an article that stated that uh, someone with bipolar condition was able to uh, 
contain their bipolar condition by using ketosis. And what does it do for gut health? You mentioned that briefly, but so it's it's another um, interesting um, uh, observation that I made is that uh, when we have yeast overgrowth or bacteria small intestine over uh, bacterial overgrowth or fungal overgrowth, what happens is that when people um, eat carbohydrates, their stomach bloats up and it hurts a lot, and then it's usually followed by diarrhea. So I reasoned. What would happen to these people if they did not eat carbohydrates? Uh, because as you may uh, know, to make alcohol of any type, you need uh, carbohydrates. You don't usually make alcohol with fat or protein. You need carbohydrates. So I, I asked these people to uh, refrain from carbohydrate. And what I've noticed is that as, I mean, as, as early as maybe one, as short as one week, a lot of these people would no longer have uh, SIBO. And the small intestine bacterial overgrowth, um, the failure rate with even great antibiotics is about 50% to 70%. It will fail. So whereas uh, doing it this way, the success rate became almost 90% to 100%. One week. That is mm -hmm. amazing. Not, not all. Some of the people, they have to go a little longer, like three months to six months. Right, but even one person, I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Um, why did it take so long for keto to come into the mainstream consciousness? I mean, you said it's been around a long time, so why are, did we just start hearing about it, I don't know, 10 years ago? As I shared, um, the benefits of ketosis has been developed, I mean, described in 19th century in England, and um, um, there have been many pioneers who have utilized keto, but there are many reasons. Number one, I think that um, the lifestyle is probably the thing that most people want to do last, like um, even, even for myself. And then the second is that there is notion, there is this belief that a balanced diet is the best diet. And even in Dr. Wild's um, system, they, they believe the balanced diet is the best approach. And if you look at keto, it's not considered a balanced diet. It is a restrictive diet of 10% uh, of less calories coming from carbohydrates. Now, it's not zero carbohydrates because, um, it, like, for example, Duke Keto says you can have up to 20 grams of total carbs. So, I, I for example, I can eat two small av avocados a day where I get uh, my uh, vegetables uh, as well as salad, which has very little uh, carbohydrates. So the the and the other part uh, I would say is that there's this general uh, bias that plant based diet is the best diet for people, and um and I think that what I would say is that for some people that would be true. Some people uh, like myself, um, this diet would work. It appears to be having given me the health benefits that that neither the balanced diet, uh, mid Mediterranean diet, nor the plant-based diet has uh, has been either not work or not tolerated. So the way that I would say is that people need to find the best way to tweak their metabolism. I was in the market, um, a natural food store, the other day, and I was looking at this milk my friend told me about that's you know dairy-free, it's made of pea protein, uh, and I was looking at all the choices of all the different milks. And I was thinking it is wonderful that now, you know, they make it so much easier for people who need to do gluten-free or want to do keto or vegan. I mean, when I was little, none of that existed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is there anything else you'd like to add in closing, Dr. Kim? So what I would also uh, say is that the all these availabilities of different styles of gluten-free, dairy-free. It, it's just an observation for myself that, that, and I recommend to patients that the less people have uh, engineered it, probably the better it is. The more we engineer it, uh, the, 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 it becomes uh, hyper-processed uh, and the side effects of uh, uh, such processing appears to be a negative, have a negative impact. So 
the the way that I follow the keto diet recommend to my patients is they very similar to Duke Keto, uh, which says uh, uh, priority over whole use the whole foods, meaning um, not not uh, not processed foods, but whole foods. Um, and then uh, what I say is that after that, uh, uh, prioritize fiber, so that uh, can make sure you get your protein, make sure you get your fiber, and then uh, make sure that uh, you're getting good healthy sources of fat. And it's that simple. And then of course avoid uh, GPS. Uh, which stands for grains, potatoes, and sugar. Uh oh, sugar. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> it always winds up in these conversations. Sugar is the devil. That's what my husband says. And I guess he's right. Well, thank you so much again for your time. This has been so interesting and so informative. We really appreciate you sharing your expertise. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, that's Dr. Yoon Han Kim. To learn more, please visit mhtlc.org. And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels. And check out our entire podcast library for topics of interest to you. Thanks for listening. I'm Maggie McKay. This is a podcast from Memorial Hospital.